Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. This night we receive your word written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation. If we're taking hold of it, we will be hearers and doers of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We began sharing this morning on this message that we're going to continue on this evening. And the title of this message is that you must guard and keep yourself. It is of paramount importance that you guard and keep yourself before God and against the enemy so he does not have place in your life. We see in Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now what does it mean to keep? This particular word is the Hebrew word shamar, which means to guard, to guard. This is what God wants. In fact, over in the Strong's Concordance, which is in the Lightning Bible program that we can put up, this is what Strong says. This is reproduced in this. This is number 8104, where it means to hedge about, to guard, to protect, to attend to. That's exactly what Adam was supposed to do. He was supposed to guard it, protect it from intruders, and not let them come in. But he failed because he did not guard and keep himself before God and against the enemy. He did not do what was necessary. And we have the fall of man. And we got the calamity that has come into the earth and all the destructive things. If he would have guarded the garden, the enemy would not have come. That shows you how important it is for you to guard yourself and keep yourself before God. And we looked at many principles throughout the Old Testament of things that we must do if we're going to be able to successfully guard and keep ourselves before God and so that we do not give place to the enemy. We're going to pick up in Proverbs as we went through, up through Psalms, as we're looking at many Old Testament scriptures. In Proverbs, in chapter 2, we see, beginning here in verse 11, he says, Discretion shall preserve thee, or guard thee, and understanding shall keep thee. This is a somewhat of a similar word. This means to guard or watch over you. Discretion. Discretion shall keep you. And we talk about discretion. That's thoughtful purpose or wise thinking, wise planning is what this refers to. It's going to guard you. And understanding is going to be able to guard you and watch over you. That means God wants us to get his word in us. So that everything that we do, all of our thoughts, all of our plans, all of our purposes, everything that we choose to do will be what God wants. And that will guard us, that will protect us so we don't give place to the enemy. And we will be an obedient to him. And understanding is going to keep you and watch over. You've got to maintain the understanding. Remember how the devil took the word out of the heart in the parable of the sower because he understood it not. Spiritual understanding is not talking about having knowledge. You must understand that there is knowledge, there is understanding, and there is wisdom. Knowledge is pleasant to the soul, the Bible says. When you get revealed knowledge, revelation knowledge comes to you, you begin to know the things, you have facts, you have revelation, spiritual information. But then you must put it in operation. As you put it in operation and understanding, we've done a series on this in the past, spiritual understanding gets imparted to you as you do the word. God will bring that spiritual understanding to you. And then as you continue to apply the knowledge and the understanding, that'll produce wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do in every situation because through the knowledge and the understanding from acting on the word, you know what to do. You have wisdom for every situation. The reason why the word got taken out is because they didn't have any understanding because they didn't act upon that which they heard, even though they got revelation knowledge. That's why it's important for you to apply the word in your life. You cannot just hear it and then just kind of go away and do your own thing. We must apply the word as we make wise planning, thoughtful purpose in what we do. It's going to keep us and guard us so we will not give place to the enemy. And as we have spiritual understanding, it's going to watch over us and guard us so that the enemy will not be able to take the word out of your heart. In verse 20, so we look at this word shamar, which is used some 468 times throughout the Old Testament. He says that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep or guard and observe the paths of the righteous. You must walk 
a righteous walk. If we do not walk in the way of the word, then we will not be righteous before the Lord. He that does righteousness continually is righteous, even as he is righteous, it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. If we don't walk in the way of righteousness, then we must be walking in unrighteousness. And unrighteousness is sin, which gives place to the enemy. And then that's how the enemy can come in and steal, kill, and destroy in your life. We must keep and guard the paths of the righteous so you walk in the ways that the Lord has set before you. In chapter 3, verse 1, he says, My son, forget not my law. And remember, what law are we under now? We're under the law of the New Testament, not the Old Testament. And we'll just jump over here for any of you who may not understand this. Many people have said, well, we're not under law anymore. Well, that's talking about the law of the Old Testament. We say we're under grace, that's right. But grace also has a law. What law? The law of Christ, the law of God, the law of the Spirit. Because everything in the New Testament is after the way of the Spirit. As it says, the priesthood was changed, but there's also made a necessity a change of the law. Not the fact that there is no law. There is law. What is the law now? It is the New Testament law, as Jesus brought forth and brought the change in the New Testament, the law that he brought forth as he was declaring all this. So it's important that we understand we are under law, but not the Old Testament law. The New Testament law is a higher law that you and I must walk in. He says, let not thine heart, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Your heart. Where's the word sown in you? It's sown in your mind, and it's also sown in your heart. And we must guard the word and keep it in our heart. He says, let your heart guard or keep my commandments. It is essential if you're going to see God bring forth his purposes in your life and bring forth the life of God in you. In Proverbs chapter 4, see, God's word will produce life, his spiritual life. Proverbs 4.4, 4, he says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. This, this is a different word. It means to grasp and hold on to. Lay hold on my words. Keep, guard my commandments and live. As you hear the word, you grasp it. You lay hold upon it. You must have a reception that you're taking hold of this and you're going to apply it in your life. That's what that's referring to. And then you keep or guard the commandments of the Lord so the devil can't take it out because you are a hearer and a doer. But what's it going to produce? You're going to live. You're going to have real spiritual life. God is going to manifest himself in you. He goes on and says, get wisdom, get understanding. <laughs> Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. He wants you to get wisdom and get understanding. You will get it as you apply the word and do it, being a doer of what you hear. Forsake her not, for she, talking about the wisdom and the understanding that you get, shall preserve or guard you. Love her, and she shall keep thee, or watch over her, guard and watch over you. We need wisdom and understanding. It's going to guard you, and it is going to watch over you, so that you will walk in the ways of the Lord. Scripture that we looked at at the end of this morning, but we want to look at it again in Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words. We need to pay attention to his word. Incline thine ear to my sayings. We want to hear what he has to say. We don't want to hear all these other negative things. He says, let them not depart from thine eyes. We only want our eyes to see things that are going to minister life unto us. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Again, this is this word shamar. Guard them in your heart. Because what's why? The devil's coming to get that word. Remember what the parable of the sower says? The devil comes immediately to try to take the word out of your heart. Just because you heard it does not mean that the word has stayed in your heart. If you didn't take hold of it and apply it, the devil was able to take that out, even though you have knowledge of it mentally, but it's not in your heart. And if it's not in your heart, then it's not going to produce. Because if the seed is not in the ground, it doesn't produce fruit. And your ground is like, the ground is likened to our heart. If the word's not in our heart, it will not produce fruit in our life. Their life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep, this is the word not sar, guard over or watch over your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life, or as Young's brings out, it really means the outgoings of life. Remember, we believe the word in our heart and then we speak it forth with our mouth to release. We release the life of God. It comes out of the, from our heart where the word has been sown within us. This is why we got to pay attention with our ears, with our eyes. We got to keep and guard it and watch over it so the enemy cannot take it out of your heart. 
In Proverbs 7, there's lots of things it says in Proverbs. He says, My son, keep my words, guard my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. It's essential that you lay these up, and you're going to lay them up in your heart, lay them up in your mind. You're going to deposit them in you. You're going to, it's going to be the good treasure in your life so that now you can walk in line with his ways and bring forth fruit. He goes on and says, Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. God wants you to guard the commandments of God. Do not let the devil get you to compromise and take the word out. Over in Proverbs chapter 13, we see over in verse 6, Righteousness keeps him that is upright in the way. Here, this is the word natsar, which means it guards and watches over you. It will watch over you if you are upright. That's why, again, uprightness of heart, being a consistent hearer and doer of the word, these are all essential because you must guard or keep yourself before God, and so the enemy does not get to you. Another thing that's important is your mouth. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. He always speaks out of self pride, what he wants. Always talking about I, 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 me, me, me mentality. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. They're going to be guarded because they're going to know to speak the right things. God wants you to be sure that you're speaking the right things. Remember that you got to put a bridle over that tongue, otherwise the enemy will get, try to get to you. The lips of the wise are going to guard them. Your words are very important. In fact, we see down in Proverbs chapter 22, over in verse 17, Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. Imply thy, apply thy heart unto my knowledge. It is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. Again, the word shamar. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. This word fitted is a word which really means to be established or become stabilized in you, become firm in being established in your life. And where is it to be? In your mouth. You keep them within you, what's going to come out of you if you keep them within you? Out of the abundance of the, abundance of the heart, the mouth's going to speak. You're going to be speaking. You're going to be speaking forth those things, and you're going to be releasing what God's Word says to bring the promises of God to pass. It's important that we also realize what it says here. In Proverbs 28, verse 4 says, They that forsake the law praise the wicked because that's what the wicked do. They don't walk according to the word. But such as keep the law or guard the law, which would be in the New Testament, the law of the New Testament, contends with them. That's right, the gospel will be contentious with people because it is trying to bring them out of darkness into the light. That's why you can't be one of those that forsakes the way of the word of God. You're actually walking in line with the wicked. No, we're going to keep it. And yes, you're going to be contending with them. There is going to be a contention. The gospel does bring conflict. And we can't be afraid of conflict. You are going to have conflict with people that will not, have not heard the word or have not come to repentance. But they need to hear it. And of course, you always approach them with love and meekness and humility and sharing the word of God with them so that they can come to the place of repentance. Regarding what God wants for a nation, and of course, our nation was founded on principles established from the Word of God and the way things were laid out in many areas. It says in Isaiah 26, 2, Open you the gates that the righteous nation, God can have a righteous nation. Who's a righteous nation? One that has his laws to be from his Word, his statutes, their, the laws, what they carry out. A righteous nation is one that keeps, guards the truth they're going to be able to enter in. You know, the Bible even talks about in Revelation 21 that there'll be, there'll be those nations that'll be saved, but there'll also be nations that are going to be turned into hell. Those that, in Psalms 9 talks about those that forget God, they're going to be turned into hell. Whole nations will be turned into hell if they don't come to the place of repentance. God wants to shake the nations. He's going to do that in these last days. But so what we, what we need to continue to pray is that this nation comes to the place of repentance, taking hold of the word, and begins to keep and guard the truth. Of course, what's the devil been doing? Trying to take the word out. Take it out of the government, take it out of the schools, take it out of everything. Don't let you pray. We don't want any word written on any government buildings. This is all a work of the devil. 
You and I have to pray and stand up against it and begin to attack all these spirits that are trying to work. Remember, our battle is not against people, but our battle is against the evil spirits that are operating through people used of the enemy. Isaiah 42, verse 20. Seeing many things, but thou observest, or guard them not. Open the ears, but he heareth not. The point that you want to see from the scripture is many people see many things. They get revelation. But it says they're not guarding them, observing them, keeping them. They're not doing them. Essentially, it's one thing to get revelation from the word. It's another thing to incorporate it into your lifestyle and keep it and do it, observe it, carry it out, and guard it so it's not taken out of your heart. That is what God wants. We probably would never want to know how much word has been taken out of our heart from what we have heard in our life. Because that which only which you have incorporated into your lifestyle and become a hearer and a doer of and kept and guarded within you is that which is still in you. Even though you have the mental knowledge of it. No, it's got to, the word's got to be in your heart. That's why we've got to keep that which has, brought, has been sown in us. Same time, God wants you to take your place as you are going to be a spiritual watchman or guard that is going to do things, do battle in the heavenlies in order to see what God purposes. Look what he says in Isaiah 62, verse 6. I have set watchmen, this is the same word, shamar. I put those guards, spiritual guards upon the walls, O Jerusalem, that will never hold their peace day in or night. What are they doing? They're praying continually. They're speaking the word continually. They're warring continually. They're fighting continually. That's what God wants. And the body of Christ has to awaken. And they have to come into the spiritual warfare. They can't just sit around and just, you know, do whatever they want to do, go their own way. No, we've got to engage in the warfare. God's looking for people that will begin to pray without ceasing. Those who will enter into the fight. He wants you to be one of those who are the spiritual guards, so to speak, on the walls that are praying, that are praying without ceasing, that are interceding, that are warring in the spirit, and they don't hold their peace. You know, you stand up for what's right, you declare the truth, and you're speaking it forth in the realm of the spirit. We even see in Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah 51, we won't take the time to go through at this point, but this is a is a, somewhat of a prophetic chapter of end time events that will happen. And we see in verse 12 where he says, Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong and set up the watchmen. Set up the spiritual guards, the word shamar. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. That means he's going to use you and me to release his destruction to come against his enemies. That's why the body of Christ has got to arise. How does God work? He works through us. You and I are his vessels. We are co-laborers. As you speak, he is able to speak. As you cast out, he's able to cast out. Remember, they went forth and preached the gospel, and God was working together with them with signs following. He needs vessels. That's you and me. He needs intercessors. He needs warriors. He needs people that will arise and take their place in the army of the Lord. You're to be a soldier. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord, and you're to please Him. That's why you cannot be entangled with all the affairs of this life, as the Bible says. God is looking for you to be one of those who is one of His spiritual watchmen, spiritual guards that are going to enter into the fight. Praise God. Now, if calamities have come against you and you have situations you're dealing with, you've got to know that God is a God of mercy, and His mercy will bring you out of it. This is the case in Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. Jonah, having rebelled against what God told him to do, to go preach the gospel at Nineveh, he rebelled and ended up, of course, thrown overboard, and now he's in the fish's belly. He says, When my soul fainted within me, like it was all hope was gone, I remembered the Lord. That's the smartest thing that he ever did. He got his eyes on the Lord. Regardless of what circumstance you're going through in life, don't let the circumstances overwhelm you. Look at the Lord. Remember the Lord. He is your source. He's got the answers. He's got the power He gives you. He's given you the authority. He's got the way that you're to walk in. And He's got the answer for every situation. He says, My prayer came in unto the end of thine holy temple. He began to pray. 
That's what you need to do. He wants you to put his word in your mouth and begin, in, in, begin to speak forth and pray. He goes on and says, those that observe <clears throat> or are going to give heed to, in this sense, lying vanities and kind of keep them within them, forsake their own mercy. The mercy of God was available to get them out of that situation, even it looked like it was all over. What kind of circumstance are you dealing with in life? Maybe you're having a lot of destructive things going on. Maybe there's a lot of turmoil. Maybe there's a lot of areas from sin. Maybe you've got some heritage generational curses that are manifesting. You've got demons that you're dealing with, problems, situations, circumstances coming your way. Well, God is going to bring you out of it. If you start observing the line with the, the worthless things that are not even to be considered, the worthless vanities or the state that you're in, essentially, is what this is talking about. You forsake Loosen, let go, leave off the mercy of God that's available. No, we're not going to observe the situation we're in. Compared to God, <coughs> those are like lying vanities. Instead, hey, the mercy of God's available to come on the scene to get me out of this, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to provide for me, to correct the situation, to whatever it might be. What's he say? I'm going to sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. You've got to put your mouth in operation and begin to give a sacrifice from your mouth with a voice of thanksgiving. At the same time, he had to repent. He said, I, I'll pay that I vowed. He's got to deal with sin and come in line. And of course, he knew his source was salvations of the Lord. And what happened? The Lord spake unto the fish and vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. If Jonah can get delivered from the fish, you can get delivered from whatever problem you have. God will heal you, deliver you, bring you out of that bondage, provide for you, bring you out of that. The mercy of God is new every morning, and that is the love of God in action to meet the needs in your life. Well, don't sit there and let those lying vanities get you all down, pulled down through the worthless situation, the circumstances you're dealing with. Start looking to God for His mercy. It's available. And start sacrificing to Him. Put your mouth in operation. Start thanking Him. Be sure you've repented of the areas of sin and know who your source is. The Lord is your source and he will bring you out of the bondage. We see another principle over in Malachi in chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2, down here in verse 7. He says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge that they should seek the law at his mouth, for he's the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Notice this, the priest's lips should keep or guard knowledge. What's to guard it? Your mouth. So who's the priest today? You and I are. We're priests of the Lord and we get revelation knowledge that he brings to us. You need to keep knowledge. How are you going to, one of the ways you're going to keep knowledge is because you keep the word in your mouth. You keep speaking what he says. You hold fast your confession to the things that God says. You don't get down in the mouth talking all this negative stuff. You don't start looking at your circumstances and start speaking contrary to the knowledge of God. No. God wants you to guard the knowledge of God, and it's going to be because you're going to keep the word in your mouth, and you're not going to let any other negative words get into your mouth. You must watch the words that you speak. Malachi chapter 3, we see something else. We pick up over here in verse 6. He says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Is God a God that changes? No. He doesn't change. He goes on and he says, Even from the days of your father, you're gone away from mine ordinances. They quit doing what God told them to do. He says, You've not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return. They didn't keep them. This is the word. They didn't guard them. They didn't observe them. They didn't carry them out. They quit doing them. Anytime you quit doing the things that God tells you to do, you're going to be in a downward spiral. The enemy's going to become in, you're going to start being deceived, and you start compromising, and you start doing other things, and doing th other ways of trying to deal with your problems. No. He said, return unto me, and I'll return unto you. Now, this is the case where they quit tithing. They didn't have a right attitude at all. He says, wherein shall we return? He said, will a man rob God? You've robbed me. You say, wherein have you robbed me? He said, in tithes and offerings. He said, you're cursed with a curse. You've robbed me, even this whole nation. It wasn't just God. It was even the whole nation. He even goes on and says, Bring all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now, he will say, the Lord of hosts, if I'll not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not room enough to receive it. 
And he says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, and neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. God wants you to be a tither. He wants you to keep all the ordinances of whatever he tells you to do so you can see God's blessings. Don't let the devil get you off track and do other things. Otherwise, you're going to give place to the devourer who can come in and he can destroy the fruits of your ground. Or your fruit will not come forth. Remember, it will cast its fruit before its time, which means it gets choked out instead of seeing it come to pass in your life. The Lord wants us to be sure we're keeping his ordinances, being a tither, and all the things that he tells us to do. Now, as we put these things in operation, we're going to see God move. And God's going to bring forth great things when you guard and keep the things that are important before God. We see in Genesis chapter 26, over here in verse 5, he says, Because Abraham ob obeyed my voice, and he kept he guarded my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You see, obedience is one thing, but you can't just obey one minute and then not guard what you have the next minute. Some people, they've been obedient for a minute or two, or a, few, a while, but then they seem to draw back. No, we've got to guard things, because you've got to understand God's Word is your lifestyle. It's what you do all the time. We just don't obey for a moment and then go back to the way we've been in the past. No. We continue to do these things. He says, because he obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, what was that all? What was he saying? Because of that, this is the promise that he said. I'm going to make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I'll give unto thy seed all these countries, and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. <clears throat> because of his obedience and because he kept the commandments. Now, now, the seed was going to bring forth the blessings. And who's that? That's talking about Jesus. Jesus was the seed. But it took his obedience. He had to do these things. Well, you want God to bring blessings in your life? We must be obedient, not only to his voice, but also keep the commandment of the Lord. <clears throat> we see in Genesis chapter 28, over here in verse 15. Here it's talking about with Jacob. He said, Behold, I'm with thee, and will keep thee or guard thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I'll not leave thee until I've done that which I've spoken to thee of. That's the promise. God's with you. You do what he says. You follow his ways. He has promised to guard you in all places wherever you go. That means you can be always protected at all times. And he'll bring you into the land. He won't leave you. He won't, in the New Testament, he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. Instead, He's going to bring you into everything that you have, but you do have to hearken unto his voice and do the things that he commands you to do. We see over in Exodus 15 the importance of you keeping the word of God and guarding it in your heart. Exodus 15, 26. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, not just once in a while, this is your life. And will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep or guard all his statutes. So again, it's our lifestyle. I'll put none of these diseases upon thee, and I've brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That tells you that healing is all connected into diligently hearkening unto his voice, and keeping and observing and carrying out the commands of the Lord in all areas. It's not just pray a prayer, and here the healing comes forth, and you have a lifestyle, it's not walking right. No. It's the whole package. God wants you to be carrying out what he says. We want to keep and guard everything that God gives to us. You've got to understand, his word is precious. His word is so important in your heart. We are so blessed in this day because we have the word of God. we got computers. we got means where we can study like in the past, it was difficult for them to do the studies before, long in the past before we had computers like we have today. We can study. We can get the Word in us. We can hear the Word. We've got all these things. We've got uh, CD players and things. We can hear the Word continually. We can put them and walk everywhere we want. We've got them in our cars. There's no excuse for the Word not coming into us all the time. If we're not doing something to put the Word in us, what are we doing with our life? We have the great opportunity in this day and age to, do, to see God's Word get into us and become 
mighty and powerful in us in our life. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if you'll obey my voice, indeed, and keep my covenant. You keep covenant when you do what he says. In the measure that your obedience is the measure that you're keeping covenant or guarding the covenant. And God operates according to a covenant. He doesn't do things just because you came to approach him just to do, because I want him to do such and such. No, he does it because of covenant. You're in a covenant relationship. You're in the new covenant. you got your part to play, and he's got his part to play. When we meet the conditions, then he'll perform it. You'll be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you'll be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And that's exactly, of course, what came to pass. You and I now are a kingdom of priests. And we are to be a holy nation as we walk uprightly before the Lord in all things. In Exodus chapter 20, we see in verse 6, He shows mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep or guard my commandments. Remember, he says, if you love me, in the New Testament, you're going to keep, you're going to carry out the commandments of God. You're going to hold on to them. You're going to do them. You're going to do what he says. And what's he going to do? He's guaranteed that he's going to show mercy unto you. Mercy will come forth in your life. But if we don't do, do the things that he tells us to do, we're going to see all kinds of problems come. And we're not going to see the manifestation of the blessings in our life. Many people just assume that God will just, his mercy will just come. No, you're going to have to love him. You have to meet the conditions. You have to keep and guard the commandments of the Lord in your life. We see over in Exodus chapter 23, it talks about the angels and what the angels will do for us. In verse 20, Behold, I send an angel before thee. What's he going to do? He's going to keep you and guard you in the way. Angels will guard you. That's if you put them into operation. And to bring you into the place which I prepared. The angels will go forth. They'll, they'll work all kinds of things to bring you to what God has for you in your life. <coughs> he says, beware of him or be on guard of him. Be ready to keep what he says. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he'll not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. <coughs> You've got to realize you can, they, can, they were provoking angels back then. And remember what it talks about Ecclesiastes 5, where he said, let your words be few, and you can't say it was an error before the angel, you know, if you speak in the wrong things and, do, and not be an obedient. No, you can provoke him. He'll not pardon your transgression. My name's in him. He says, if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to thy enemy and an adversary to thy adversaries. As you are keeping God's word, keeping and guarding yourself before God and against the and not given place to any areas of sin, God will be an enemy to your enemies. Those angels will fight for you. They will protect you. They will have charge over you. They'll keep you from evil things coming against you. In Leviticus, Chapter 25, verse 18. Wherefore, you shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. You can dwell in safety. You can be safe. You can be protected all the time. So, well, if I haven't been, well, that means, that means something, another, the, the way the door's been open for the enemy, some way or another he's been able to work. The angels, some reason, weren't going in operation. God's not the one that pulls down the hedge. Who pulls down the hedge? You and I pull down the hedge when we don't do what he says through sin. It's not God that's doing that. God's the one that wants to bring blessing, and the angels will protect you. Leviticus 26.3, If you walk in my statutes and keep or guard my commandments and do them. Again, notice, the walking step by step, the keeping, the guarding, the holding on to this so nothing comes and takes it out. And the doing, now this becomes your lifestyle. This is what you're carrying out. You see this constantly. Then, it goes on and talks about all these great blessings. You give rain in due season, land will yield or increase, trees of the field to yield their fruit. You and I are a type of the trees of the field. Trees of righteousness will bring forth fruit. We'll see God's blessings come forth in all kinds of areas. It talks about how he gives peace to you. He's going to rid all the enemies out. You're going to chase your enemies. They're going to fall before you by the sword. You do have a part to play. You've got to get into the warfare. But nonetheless, because you have the walk, and you guard and keep the word, and you do it, as you go forth in battle, you're going to see the enemies are going to bring forth. They're going to be put underfoot, and you're going to see God 
do great things. He says, I'll have respect unto you. I'll make you fruitful. I'll multiply you and establish my covenant with you. The co covenant promises are being established in your life as you're possessing them because you're hearing and doing the Word of God. That's what God wants for you to do. In Deuteronomy, in chapter 4, we see over in verse 40, Thou shalt keep, therefore, his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day. Again, it's over and over and over and over. We're only probably looking at about 100 of the scriptures, but 468 of these throughout the Old Testament, constantly, constantly driving this home to them. Well, we have, need it constantly driven home to us, how the importance of it is. And what's going to be the promise, the blessing, that it will go well with thee? God says it will go well with you if you will guard and keep his, his commandments. And with thy children after thee, it will carry on to your inheritance. And that you might prolong your days upon the earth. That means long life. Instead of getting taken out early by the enemy. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, down in verse 29. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. Again, keep and guard them that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Same pro type of a promise. That's what God wants. <clears throat> Chapter 6, he goes on in uh, Deuteronomy 6. He says, These are the commandments, statutes, judgments the Lord your God commanded to teach you. You might do them in the land that you go to possess it. That you might fear the Lord, keep all his statutes, commandments that I command thee, thou and thy sons and sons' sons. Not just you. Teach them to your children. I mean, you can't make them do it, but you tell them and direct them in that way. If they'll take hold of it and walk it out, then to do it all the days of thy life, then thy days will be prolonged. He also says here, as you observe, guard yourself, shamar, to do it. It'll be well with you. We see this several places. You're even going to increase mightily. God wants you to increase mightily. He wants you to become strong. He wants you to increase. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be blessed in everything that you do. He wants you to have fruit, more fruit, much fruit. He's going to increase you mightily. That's a promise of God. But the key is, are we doing the things that he says? In verse 17, You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies, his statutes, which he's commanded you. You do that which is right and good in the sight, it'll be well with you. You'll go in and possess the land. Now the word possess, by the way, means to seize and take control of it. It implies warfare which will carry over in the New Testament. These are all, we look at it in the types in the New Testament, applicable to us. This means as you go into the battle, you're going to be able to take the land. But if you don't walk in the Word, and you're still trying to knock the enemies out, are you going to get very far? No. You've got to have the walk and guard and be doing the things that God has commanded you to do. Praise God. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Here he says, Know therefore the Lord thy God, he's faithful. He, the God, he's the God and the faithful God that keeps covenant and mercy with them, that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Again, God's faithful. You should know what God will do in every situation because you have a covenant. But it all comes down to, if you are guarding and keeping the commandments of the Lord and doing what he says, loving him, then you know, you know that the Lord is the faithful God that keeps covenant and mercy. There's no doubt about it. There should never be any doubt or wondering and wavering about what God will do for you in your life. We are to carry out what he says. We see in Deuteronomy 11, in verse 8, here it's tied into spiritual strength. You keep, guard the commandments, I command you this day, you're going to be strong. and You're going to be able to go in and possess the land. It takes spiritual strength to conquer spiritual enemies. You're only going to be as spiritually strong as the level of you keeping the commandments, the Word of God, guarding it, keep it in your heart, active in your life. It is your lifestyle. We even see down in verse 22. He again says, diligently keep these commandments. And what's he say? You're to do them. You're to love the Lord. You're to walk in His ways. You're to cleave unto Him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations before you and you possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. That's all a type of driving out the e evil spirits out of you, driving out every enemy, getting set free from every bondage. Notice there was a condition before it's going to happen. Then, which is what? They've got to have the walk. What kind of a walk do you have? 
What are you doing? What are you, what you're, what are you cleaving to every day? The point is that God needs to be your total source in life. And we're going to put his word first place. Deuteronomy 28.1 It'll come to pass if you'll hearken diligently in the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, this is the word shamar, to guard and to do all his commandments. You've got to keep them and then you do them. You can't let that word be taken out of your heart. Guard and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day. The Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all the blessings will come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord. If blessings come on and overtake you, they come and get you. That means you can't even get away from them. Are the blessings coming on you and overtaking you and getting you? They're just coming on you all the time? If not, are we, meet, are we doing what he says? <clears throat> the problem is, most people aren't doing what he says. <coughs> As it says, hearkening diligently unto the voice and doing what he says. See, this is why the emphasis today is so important for you to have the word of God established in you. Hearing, doing, walking the walk of the word. Not just trying to grab hold of a promise and then go and do what you want to do. Or hearing a message and try to apply some principle, uh, you know, just to see what I can get. Without incorporating it in your lifestyle. It's the walk. It's the lifestyle that God is looking at. He's looking at what's in your heart. He's looking at all of these things in your life. We even see more. Of the, it talks about in verse 9. He'll establish you a holy people unto himself. You'll become a holy people. But there is a condition if you keep the commandments of the Lord, walk in his ways. That's the only way you're ever going to become holy. And what kind of church is Jesus going to present to himself when he comes back? One that's holy, without blemish, without spot, unrebukable, unreprovable. Which means, you want to be in that company of the glorious church? We've got to have the commandments of God and keeping His commandments and walking the holy walk before the Lord. Look what he says, the promise in verse 13. The Lord will make thee the head and not the tail. You'll be above only and you'll not be beneath if you hearken to the commandments of the Lord, which I command you to observe, to keep them, guard them, and to do them. You guard them, you keep that enemy from coming in and taking it out because it's your lifestyle, and then you do them because you're putting it in operation as you do the word. And what happens? You're, you're going to be above only. You're not going to be beneath. You're going to be the head, not the tail. These are all promises that God will bring forth and manifest. Here's another one. Many people want to prosper today, but they fail to realize that prosperity is tied, to, tied into your entire walk. Deuteronomy 29.9. Keep therefore guard the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. That is good news. I want to prosper in all that I do. I don't want to have just a few things working out. I want everything. You want everything. It is promised to you if you will guard the words of this covenant. This is your life coming into you. The word is life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh, remember. It is so important in order to see the prosperity come forth. Look at the statement and the testimony in 2 Samuel 22. David's psalm of thanksgiving for deliverance from his enemies. And we saw this this morning, but it's very powerful, where it says, The Lord rewarded me, verse 21 and following, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. That's right, whether we're walking right. According to the cleanness of my hands. That's whether we've dealt with sin. That's where we've been cleansed. That's where we've become holy. He recompensed me. I've kept the ways of the Lord. I haven't wickedly departed from my God. He guarded the ways of the Lord. All his judgments were before me. All his statutes, I didn't depart from them. He says, I was upright before him, and I've kept or guarded myself from mine iniquity. You're going to guard yourself. What kind of iniquity we got in us? In the flesh. Your flesh is, is nothing good in your flesh. No good thing dwells in your flesh, as Paul said. That's why you have to crucify your flesh daily. If you don't crucify your flesh daily, what are you going to be? Are you going to be upright before him? No. The enemy is going to be working in your life. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness in his eyesight. However God sees you is how he's going to pour out blessings upon you or whether he withholds them. And many people, he can't do what he wants to do because of the fact that they aren't doing what he wants. 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 12. You and I must guard and keep ourselves. 
Verse 12, he says, Concerning this house which thou art in building. And remember, we're looking at this all from the spiritual types. Are you and I building a house? Yeah, we're building a spiritual house. The house of God in us. Through hearing and doing the word, you're building your house on the rock. If, here's the condition, you'll walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep, guard all my commandments to walk in them. You guard them so I walk in them. I keep them so that I'm going to walk in them, so it's what I do. I keep it in my mind, I guard it, so I'm going to make sure that I do this word all the time, so I don't react out of the flesh or react out of uh, anything contrary to the word. Then I will perform my word with thee, which I spake to David my father. It wasn't automatic. The promises of God are not automatic. Things that might have been spoken over you are not automatic. They're going to come to pass when the conditions are met in our life. Look what he says in 1 Kings chapter 9, quite a statement, in verse 4 and following. If you'll walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart, upright, just to do according to all that I've commanded thee, and will keep or guard my statutes and my judgments, then what? Then, that's the condition, I'll establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. We can take that as, if we'll walk this walk, we're going to see the rule and the reign of God get established in our life, which is what the kingdom's all about. But if you shall turn it all from following me. Now, how would that be? Because they didn't have the walk. They weren't doing what he said. If you will not keep or guard my commandments and my statutes that I've set before you. And see, if you don't, you're going to go and do something else. And you're going to go and serve other gods. So, well, I'm not serving some other weird god. If you're serving self, you're serving other gods. If you're not doing the word, you're serving other gods of some sort. Many people serve money, or they say serve other people that manipulate and tell them what to do what they want them to do. No, you've got to do what God says. And notice he say happens to these guys. I'm going to cut off Israel out of the land which I've given them. In this house that I've hallowed for my name, I'll cast out of my sight. Israel be a proverb and a byword among all people. They get cut off. That's quite a statement. We don't want to be cut off, or you can be cut off from the blessings of God coming forth in your life. This is why. The word in you and keeping it and guarding it is so important. Remember, as we mentioned, because Adam did not keep and guard the garden, we have the fall of man, which has been the greatest calamity that has come. Praise God for Jesus who came and redeemed us. But we have a terrible situation because of the fall of man in the earth today. Psalms 19, verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, we're warned, and in the keeping of them, the guarding of them, is talking about his word. The whole subject here in Psalms 19 is about uh, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, and the fear of the Lord, and the judgments of the Lord, and all these things. In the keeping or guarding of them is their great reward. Great reward God will bring forth in your life. At the end of your days, you don't want to look back at it and say, you know, when the rewards are all passed out, I wonder what happened here. I didn't get any rewards. Well, because we didn't merit those ward, rewards because of your works is what God's going to look at, determine, determine it. You know, what kind of rewards you're going to get. And what's going to be the key? Were we guarding and keeping the commandments of the Lord and walking in His ways? He says you've been warned about them. If you keep them, there'll be great reward. It'll be coming in this life and also in the life to come. Because you've got to realize, don't just think uh, this life only you got to be eternally minded. you got to be thinking of everything you're doing is sowing seed that is either going to bring forth a reward because of your works, or your works could be burned up and you could suffer loss, as the Bible says. Hey, we want to have great reward. Great reward. Look at Psalms 25, in verse 10. He says this, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way, he says. And he says in verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. That's God's mercy, and they're going to be truth according to his ways. For who? And such as keep his covenant and his testimonies, that guard his covenant. You see, many people think that when they receive Jesus, their personal Lord and Savior, they're just signing on the dotted line, they're getting their ticket to heaven, everything's going to be great, and now I can just go and do what I want to do. No. You've got to understand that you entered into a covenant you came into the same thing that Jesus came into. 
Jesus made a covenant with the Father. When you preach the gospel, tell them, hey, you, you need to receive Jesus. You're coming into a covenant relationship with the living God. Yes, you're going to get a spirit. You're coming into a relationship with them. But also, you're coming into the responsibility of walking in covenant relationship with him. That's what we're in, whether we realize it or not. All his paths will be mercy and truth when you keep the covenant. Praise God. Look at Psalms 37, verse 34, what God will do for you. These are blessings that will come forth. Wait on the Lord. Keep, guard his way. What's he going to do? He's going to exalt you to inherit the land. You're going to be exalted by the Lord. See, God exalts those that meet his conditions. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to guard and keep his way, not our way, his way. We are going to walk the way of the Lord. Verse 37, mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. This word mark means to observe, to give heed, to guard or pay attention now to this perfect man. He's upright. That's the guy that's upright. And what's he going to have? He's going to have peace. If you don't have peace, why not? We should have peace. God's peace. And we'll see this later, but we brought this out before, but we'll bring it again. You've got to understand that peace is a spiritual peace that comes because you do what the Word says. He says in Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. We'll get into the New Testament scriptures. We'll be coming up on Wednesday. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard. The word keep actually means to guard. It's a word for reo, which means to guard or protect like a military guard. The peace will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You should have peace at all times. If you got an anxiety, we got off track. We're not guarded. We give in place to the enemy. He didn't want us to have that. If we pray and we know what God's going to do, the peace of God will come. It is powerful. You'll have peace regardless of what the circumstances are. And it will guard as a, a military guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, praise God. That's why, of course, it goes on and says, hey, you better make sure you're thinking on the right things because that's a doorway for the enemy to come in to get you off of the peace of God so your heart won't be, and mind won't be guarded. We need to be doing the things that he commands us to do, praise God. Over in Proverbs, in chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. The importance of you keeping and guarding yourself before the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. He says this, Blessed is the man that hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting, this word waiting means guarding, at the posts of my doors. He's, he's guarding at the doorposts of my entrance. You have to guard yourself because you want to be sure that God's going to come into you and you're also you're not going to lay anything else into you. All the gates, when it talks about the gates, that's all the means of entrance. There are all types of ent entrances coming in. You've got to keep the gates. You can't let the enemy come in. You've got to guard yourself so the enemy doesn't come in and bring destruction. He says, for whoso finds me finds life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. God will bring great favor if you'll guard everything that's coming into you. That's why don't waste your time listening to things on the TV that are not bringing forth the word of God into you. Don't waste your time any of these things out there that you're hearing, seeing, that are going to lead you away from the things of the Word of God. You want to obtain the favor of the Lord? You're going to see it if you do what he says. But he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. We're actually damaging our own soul. We can be a vessel for the wronging of our own soul. Why? Because we don't do the things that he tells us to do. Praise God. We also got to watch our mouth. As we've mentioned, there's so many scriptures on this. Proverbs 13, 3. He that keeps or guards his mouth, or this word actually is the word natsar, which means to watch over his mouth. Then he keeps or guards, this is the word shamar, guards his life. Why? Because where's the life? The life's through the word. Where's the word to be? In your heart. You're guarding it because that's, that's a gateway into your heart. But he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. You've got to realize if you don't watch your words, you're actually sowing all kinds of destruction in your life. At the same time, you also need to be correctable. 
Proverbs 13, 18 says, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. He refuses discipline and correction. Oh. But he that regards or keeps, that's the word, shamar, reproof, the rebuke, the correction, shall be honored. Always be ready to be correctable. Don't let pride get in there. I don't want anybody to correct me. I don't want anybody to tell me anything. Oh, you're going to be... Poverty and shame comes to the person. But if you receive the correction that God brings, then God says that you will be honored. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 17, <clears throat> look what he says. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. That's your walk. My walk is I'm departing from evil. I'm walking the straight and narrow. Remember, the narrow way leads to life, while the broad way leads to destruction. He that keepeth or guards his way preserves, this is again the word natsar, which means to watch over his way, keeps or guards his soul. See, what's the enemy trying to do? He's trying to get to your soul so he can destroy you. You've got to guard yourself. That's your will, your intellect, your emotions. Watch everything that's coming in from feelings, thoughts, anything trying to get to your will, attitudes and so forth. Anything that's inconsistent with the Word of God, you jump on that with the Word of God. You cast that down. You speak against that. You cast those spirits out. You destroy what the enemy's trying to do so you don't give place to him. So you will guard your soul and not let the enemy come in and do a destructive work. We see what's going to happen if you do guard yourself. He that gets wisdom loves his own soul. He that keeps understanding shall find good. You guard understanding. We guard it because we hear and do it. It's our lifestyle. We're not going to turn away from it. You're going to find good from the Lord. Down in verse 16, he says, He that keeps my commandments, he keeps his own soul. Again, the first word, is, you know, this one is shamar. He guards the commandment. He guards his own soul. It uses both of them here. You guard the commandment. What you mean you keep it in you? You're not going to let it be taken out? You're guarding your own soul. But the guy who despises his ways which is parallel here with not keeping or guarding the commandment, shall die. And that's exactly what will happen. Proverbs 21 also uses these words, verse 23, regarding your mouth. Whoso keepeth, or shamar, guards his mouth in his tongue, shamar guards his soul from troubles. You can actually cause your soul to have troubles because you speak negative words. You can make a mountain out of a molehill by speaking things. You can be, you know, have these things and you start speaking all these negatives and getting a tizzy. You know, it's cause all kind of trouble in your soul. Watch the words you speak. Guard your mouth. You only want to speak the things that God wants. Look what it says in Proverbs 22, verse 5. He says this, Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that does keep or guards his soul shall be far from them. You'll be far from the thorns, the snares of the enemy, because you guard your soul. The enemy's not going to get to you. You're not going to give place to him. Proverbs 29, verse 18, is a highly misunderstood scripture by people. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Now, when it talks here about the people perishing, why is that? He that keepeth or guards the law, happy is he. Now, when it talks about the people perishing, this is a word which actually means it's in the nafal. You have to understand that these Hebrew words are in, have different stems. And this is in the nafal. It means to loosen up restraint. Otherwise, he lets go of restraint. Where there's no vision, the people will let go of restraint, literally is what this says. Which means what? They're, you know, they're just going to do whatever they want to do. What's the restraint? The Word of God. Where does vision come from? The Word of God in you. You, your vision of life is all going to be shaped by what Word has come into you. If you don't have the Word in you, you've got a wrong vision. You might have a vision of self, vision of what I want, you know, all these different things. No, you want God's vision through the Word in you. If there's no vision in you from the Word, then you'll just loosen the restraint. You'll just kind of walk in your own ways. You've got to walk in some way. But he that keeps or guards the law, 
where in his heart, happy or blessed is he. You're going to be blessed. You can't cast off restraint and go and do what you want to do. Look at this promise, a tremendous promise. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. Whoso keepeth or guards the commandment, now the King James doesn't bring this out right, shall feel no evil thing. It's not talking about that. The word feel is the word yada, which means to know. You're gonna, he put feel in there because he's talking about experience it. So in some ways that's okay, but it'd be better to know, know in any aspect. That's really what it means. Whoso guards the commandment shall know no evil thing. That means no evil is going to come nigh you because you're keeping the commandment. Why is that? The devil can't get place to you. You see, the devil has to have place in order to get a chance to come in. If we guard ourselves and he didn't have place, he can't get to us. The devil couldn't beat up Jesus because he never found any place in him. He couldn't get to him. He had like sinful flesh. He had to resist all the temptations. He was tempted in life, every point, just like we are, in all areas. But he did the word. That's the key. You want to rise above all evil? You keep and you guard the word of God, all the New Testament commandments that you carry out in your life. That's why we did that series on the New Testament commandments, some 12 messages. We took about a month of teaching on that in depth and brought all that out about the laws of the New Testament, the laws of the Spirit, all these things and the commandments of God that we looked throughout the New Testament. Those are the things that you and I are responsible to carry out in our life. Isaiah chapter 26, down here in verse 3. Thou wilt keep him, this is the word not sar, which means he'll watch over you, keeping watch over you in perfect peace. You can stay in peace at all times. If we lose our peace, we give place to the enemy. Peace comes from God, and we can abide in it at all times. But what's going to be the key? He'll guard you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, or propped up on thee, leaned and supported. How can your mind be supported on him? The Word. You're thinking on the Word. You're speaking the Word. Your mind's thinking, what does the word say? A thought comes in your mind, is this in line with the word? No, we cast that down. We take that captive. We replace it with the word of God. How did Jesus deal with all the attacks of the enemy? It's written, it's written, it's written. How are you going to deal with all the attacks of the enemy? It's written, the word of God. But if you don't know the word of God, what are you going to be able to do? You're in trouble. Say, well, I won't be responsible then. Oh, no, you're responsible for the word of the covenant because you entered into a covenant relationship. Ignorance doesn't make it. So, well, I, I thought that I'd never have any problems, you know, if as long as I was doing what I knew. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Look at what it says in Leviticus 5, 17. If a soul sin and commits any of these things that are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, so he committed a sin. But look what it goes on and says, though he wist it not, wist is an old English word which means no, which is the, really the word yada. Though he knows it not, can he plead ignorance? Well, I didn't know that. No. It says, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. That shows the fact that ignorance will not work. You and I are responsible to know God's Word. you got to know God's Word better than you know everything else. And if you don't know His Word, say, well, well, you can't say, well, Lord, I didn't know that. Doesn't matter. You're in a covenant relationship. You know, you enter into a covenant relationship or let's say a contract and you got your part to play and someone else has got their part to play and you don't know all the things that you're supposed to know that you're supposed to do and then you don't perform them. You think he's gonna, you're going to get the blessings that have come for the, the part of the, for you performing the contract when you didn't do it? No. Well, you can't say, well, I didn't know. Why didn't you know? Because you didn't find out. You and I got to find out what the word says so that we will do all the things that he tells us, praise God. He wants to bring great blessings upon you in your life. We even see one other scripture we'll look at, a couple more before we conclude tonight. Daniel chapter 9, over in verse 4. He said, I prayed in the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, he knew him as a dreadful God, Keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and that keep 
or guard his commandments. We see this throughout the Word of God, isn't it? And loving him isn't just because I say I love you. If you love me, you'll keep the commandments. Remember John 14, 21. He it is that loved me that has my commandments. As it talks about. Speaks that. John 14, verse 21. He declares it. He that has my commandments and keeps them. This is the word when we get to the New Testament. Tereo, which talks about guarding something or keeping it. He it is that loves me, and he that loves me will be loved to my Father. You're not automatically loved to the Father, or that Jesus says, I'll love him and will manifest myself to him. It's for those that meet the condition. You see, one of the most important things, you've got to understand, you have a covenant with God. We just did this series not too long ago on covenants, which was a real eye-opener and a real game-changer, as some people said, for their whole life. They said, wow, I didn't know that I was in this situation. You are in a covenant relationship with God, and when you meet the conditions of the covenant, God will perform all of his covenant promises for you. Because God watches over his word. He exalted his word above his name. He's not about to not perform his word. He swore by himself because he could swear by no greater. That's the covenant that you and I have. It is the word of God is serious business. Praise God. He wants you and I to be doers of his word. One last scripture. We looked at this one this morning, and we'll conclude with it again tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the summation, the whole deal? We kind of throw it all together. What's this whole thing about? Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Remember, when we stand before God in judgment, we're going to get things done in our body, whether it's good or whether it's evil as well, the Bible says in the New Testament. Therefore, what you do with his word is what is going to determine what he does with you. What you do with his word is going to determine whether the blessings are coming or not. God wants you to do what he says. So that means what key is we're going to have to guard and keep ourselves. You're going to guard and keep yourself before God so you see the blessings come. And then you're going to guard and keep yourself against the enemy so the enemy does not have place in your life. Again, if Adam would have guarded the garden, we would not have had the fall of man. If you will guard and keep yourself before God, you will not fall. And the Bible says that he will keep you from falling and present you faultless before the Lord. I guess we have to show that scripture as that comes up. Jude 24. This is a promise for you and me. Now unto him that's able to keep you. This is the word guard. You'll see this one later. Philoso. To guard you from falling. How are you going to be guard? How are you going to not fall? Because God will guard you from falling. Now why would he guard you from falling? Because you did what was necessary so he could guard you. Which is walk in his word. And what else is he going to do? He's going to present you faultless, without blemish, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's what you and I are coming to. And how's it going to do it? You say, well, boy, am I going to have to do all this myself? No, you're going to do his word, and God's going to do the whole work. He's going to do the whole work, but you do have to cooperate. You do have to follow him. If you and I will guard and keep ourselves before God by hearing and doing his word, and keeping that word and not letting the devil take it out, then you and I, are going to be guarded from falling and we will be without blemish we'll be holy and we will see god bring forth great blessings in our life say this with me heavenly father in the name of jesus i thank you for your word that declares i must guard and i must keep myself before the lord and against the enemy so that i see all the blessings that god has given in his word that they will come on me they will overtake me they will catch me i will prosper in all that i do it's connected to my health to see healing i thank you lord i'm making my decision i'm going to keep <coughs> all the new testament commandments and i'm going to walk in line with the word of god and i'm going to guard myself so the enemy has no place 
And God will guard me from falling. And he will present me faultless. The conclusion is, I am to fear God and to keep and guard his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. And then I'm going to see God's blessings come on me in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. On Wednesday, we've got a few more scriptures to talk about regarding those that did not guard and what happened to them. And also, we'll be looking at the New Testament scriptures. We'll be looking at this word, tereo, and the word, philoso, and all the places where it uses these words. Very important. This is a very important message for the body of Christ because most Christians out there they're seeking to get all these blessings and seeking to hear and do the word in these areas, but they're not guarding themselves. They're not guarding themselves the way they should by the consistent hearing and doing of the word and keeping the enemy out. You know, you can't, and even if people casting out demons, and we cast out demons all the time. But you don't cast out the, you cast out the demons and you leave the door open and they're coming back in, uh, you're not getting too far. In fact, they'll come back with seven more wicked themselves. You'll actually be counterproductive. You'll be worse. Even the guy that gets healed thinks he's going to be great. Jesus found the guy that was healed, remember, in John 5, 14. He said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come on you. Hmm. That means our walk is pretty important. That's why God wants you to walk the walk of the Lord, keep his commandments, guard the word, put the word first place, hear and do it. God's blessings will come on you, and they will catch you. I want God's blessings coming on and guarding, overtaking me and catching me every place I go. I want to see his healing, deliverance, his prosperity, prosper in everything you do, safety, protection, angels going before, preparing the way, a blessing, bringing, for, bringing me to everything he has for me. That's what he'll do for us if we meet the conditions. Father, thank you for all that you brought forth. We will take heed. We will guard and keep ourselves before you. Father, thank you. There'll be much fruit as we're hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. On Wednesday, we're going to get into the New Testament scriptures. You're going to see a lot of things that are very important that we are instructed. These we all look at in the light of the New Testament realities, the types and shadows. They're all same principles carry over. And then on Wednesday, you're going to see the New Testament scriptures, and we're going to bring them out. And you're going to see all the things that you are to keep and to guard so that you can see God bring victory. And we, God would never tell us all these things if it wasn't important in our life. And it makes all the difference in the world because we can't be, you know, proceeding one direction and then open the door another direction. Or we're, no wonder we're not gaining ground. We don't want to spin our wheels spiritually or try to attain one area and then open up the door. God wants all sin dealt with in your life. He wants you crucified in the flesh daily. He wants total separation from the world. He wants the word coming out of your mouth and you're going to speak good things and you're not going to speak other stuff. He wants your words to be fused so you just don't just go out and spot out, spat out, you know, speaking all this stuff and out, just carrying on and on and on. He doesn't want you to be negative in your mouth. He doesn't want you to be a complainer or a griper. Remember those guys that murmured? They got destroyed of the serpents. That was an example for us. You're going to see all these things. Praise God. We are coming in line. God is at work in the body of Christ to bring us to the truth, coming out of all bondage, come to the place of holiness, walking in his ways, and you and I are going to be mighty. We're going to be powerful. We're going to be increasing. We're going to be strong. We're going to possess everything that God has. We're going to prosper in all we do. We're going to see the glory of God poured out in the end time church that will meet the conditions. There's a remnant who are going to listen and are going to do it, and they're going to see it come to pass. And it's going to be you and me because we're going to hear and do God's word. Praise God. If you need prayer, I invite you to come forward. Otherwise, God bless. Take heed to what you've heard. Guard and keep all these things. And then God's, you're going to see God move mightily in your life. You're dismissed. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We'll continue on this. And uh, if you need prayer, come forward. Otherwise, have a wonderful week. And don't let the devil steal this word out of your heart. God bless. You're dismissed.